This is uh, the best part of the program for me, and the hardest part for me, because it get a little emotional. Uh, by the time I want to pat my chest and say I'm doing really good, and I remember these honorees and their stories and their inspiration and their lives, I think I haven't even started doing anything yet. I feel like a failure. And uh, tonight, we, I will not be here without Barbara. Because when the idea of the league was conceived, to have to bring both Republicans and Democrats together for great community good. I I went to Republican and got a yes and amen. I went to Democrat and got some stories. Then I called Pete Bradbury and he said, Call Barbara. Uh, but I must advise you, I know you like to talk, promise. When when Barbara is in a stage with you. Please do not go after her after she makes a speech. Either you speak in Swahili or speak any other language. Because Barbara will destroy your career. <laughs> Don't go after Barbara. As, as the case may be, uh, we were invited to give eulogy to Bill, uh, Brie Barbary, Brie Barbary. It was me, Governor John Kitzebur, and Governor Barbara Roberts and some other guy. And it was Barbara Robert speaking after me. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this because of what B said. I said, if I have to speak after Barbara, I will speak, I will give my speech, my eulogy in Swahili and Farsi and Arabic. I let them translate the, my speech. And somehow be in a vein, and I spoke after Governor uh, Kitsaba, right? This woman right here has been an inspiration to women. The man has been a monument to mercy and merits, and has been a, 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 a some, somewhat a definition and manifestation of the politics of consensus that we talk about. So Barbara, on behalf of the board, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of those who believe in the B word, bipartisan word, we ask you to accept our word tonight. Thank you. not that I'm not tall, it's just that I am short. So, <laughs> my deepest thank you for this amazing honor from the Oregon League of Minority Voters. And I am doubly excited to be included with the evening's other honorees, admired political leaders, judicial talent, civic leadership, and even journalistic talent. Since the founding of this Oregon chapter in 2007, I think that's the right date, right? Yes. I have been both a fan and a supporter. Supporter means money. <laughs> Promise King and his dedicated team of wonderful, wonderful people have remained focused from the beginning on their missions of inclusion, fairness, empowerment, and outreach. And I remain committed to their missions and goals. The future requires dedication and it requires hard work. It takes way more than slogans. We have to remember that slogans are good, but they don't get the work done. It takes more. It is about believing 
giving of our time and resources, remaining the strong voices for equity and fairness that we want to be. And tonight, this special honor you have given me has re-inspired me. I needed it. It was time, and thank you for that. It, I am back on the mission. I am back on the mission of your work and Oregon's future for equality. The mission belongs to all of us. You have my support, my deep thanks, and my promise, my promise to stay with the mission. Thank you so much. If I was a Democrat, but I'm not, I would have uh, hired uh, my friend Governor Robert to run for president. Are you fired up? Ready to go? 